Now, if you're purchasing goods from a supplier in China or Vietnam or Turkey, what have you, and you're considering to conduct inspections, well, then it's absolutely critical that you understand AQL. Okay, welcome everyone. I'm Billy Miner, Marketing Manager for Insight Quality. And in this video, we're talking about AQL or Acceptance Quality Limit. I'm here today with Andy Church. He's our founder at Insight Quality and he's an industry veteran with more than 25 years of experience. And we're gonna talk today about what AQL is and then we're gonna walk you through how to use the AQL chart. Uh, so thank you for joining me today, Andy. Thanks, Billy, happy to be here. Great. Let's start off with the most basic question. What is AQL? So Andy, could you explain it for us? Sure, AQL is a statistical tool that allows you to set specific standards for your product and verify that you're on track to meet them over time. The definition based on ISO 2859 is the quality level that is the worst tolerable process average when a continuing series of lots is submitted for acceptance sampling. So what's that mean in layman simple terms? That means what's the worst quality you're willing to accept? To use AQL, you set defect percentages for your product. For example, no more than approximately 2.5% of my goods should be unsaleable then you would regularly inspect your goods at the factory. All right, great. Thank you, Andy. What exactly happens during an AQL inspection? An inspector arrives at the factory and we have a formula for them to uh, verify the quantity of the lot that's to be inspected. And then the inspector selects the master cartons to be selected for sampling and they check for defects in various categories, such as packaging and labeling, visual inspection, functional testing, physical requirements and measurements, and any other special tests that may need to be done. To conduct these inspections, they use the what we call the AQL chart. What exactly is the AQL chart? So this is the tool that we use, the inspector uses, to determine the Sample size was originally de developed by the U.S. military uh, for inspecting equipment. And it allows the inspector to answer two questions. How many units do we need to inspect from our shipment? And how many defective products are allowable before the inspection fails? It consists of two tables, which you can see here. So we can see the two tables here. And now let's talk about how to use them. So we've divided the process of using the tables into seven steps. So let's discuss the first one, which is setting your inspection level. Now, at the top of table one here, we can see that it says general inspection levels. And that is what we're gonna focus on first. Andy, maybe you can explain the general inspection levels or the inspection levels overall. Inspection levels allow you to decide on the confidence level for your AQL inspection. The higher your inspection level, the more products your inspector will check and the more confidence you can have. But checking more can increase inspection time and cost. So you'll want to choose and balance a general level to apply to the whole inspection. And you may use special levels for specific tests or function tests. Consumer product companies typically use general level two by default. Okay, so we would use general two by default. Um, now, if we had chosen general three, in that case, we'd be uh, more stringent and we'd be inspecting more units. And if we chose general one, we'd be less stringent and inspect fewer units. So, okay, so that covers step one, that's easy enough. Now in step two, we're gonna select our lot or batch size from the left-hand side of the chart. So Andy, how do lot sizes work? The lot size is the total number of products in the group that you're inspecting. 
Generally, this number is the same as your order quantity. For example, if you order 2,000 units of your product, whether it's ceramic mugs, standing decks, or something else, you would choose the range from 1,201 to 3,200. Okay, that's not too difficult. We ordered 2,000 units, so we're gonna choose the range that matches that number. And we can see that there are a bunch of letters across the AQL chart. So Andy, what are those letters? Once you've selected your inspection level and lot size, you can find the point on the chart where they intersect. This letter is called your code letter, which will be used on table two of the chart. Since we chose general level two and our lot size of 1,201 to 3,200, our code letter is K. Okay, so our code letter is K and we're gonna use that on table two. So now we're here looking at table two and we can see it's right there on the left side of the table. So now we're moving to step four, which is simply finding that letter on the table. All right, easy enough. Uh, that's step four, but the next step, step five, requires a little bit more brain power. We're going to talk about how to choose our AQL levels, which we can see at the top of table two. And now to choose the AQL levels, we first need to understand the different types of defects. So Andy, would you explain the three types of defects? The first is a minor defect, a slight deviation from specifications that does not make the product unsaleable. For example, a quarter inch scratch on the back of a 24 inch computer monitor. Second would be a major defect which is a deviation from specifications that may, makes the product unsaleable or likely to be returned. For example, that same quarter inch scratch on the front of a 24 inch monitor. And finally, a critical defect, which is an issue that poses a safety hazard to the product's user. For an example, an exposed wire on the monitor cable. So we've got these three types of defects, minor, major, and critical. Understanding that, we need to set an allowable level for each type of defect. We might be the most tolerant of minor defects and the least tolerant of critical defects. So Andy, how do we choose an AQL level for each one? The majority of consumer product companies most often choose the following defect percentages. 4.0 allowance for minor, a 2.5 allowance for major defects in zero allowance for critical defects. Depending on the specifics of your product and market, you can adjust these levels. For high-end products, you might lower them, and for low-end products, you might raise them. So at the top of the chart, what we're going to do is select 4.0 for minor defects and 2.5 for major defects. And for critical defects, we don't really have to select a percentage or an AQL level because we have zero tolerance for them. And any critical defect, excuse me, critical defect would result in a failed inspection. Is that right? That's correct. Okay, so that covers step five. Now, what do we need to do in step six? Now that we've found our code letter on the left side of the table and our AQL levels at the top, we need to find our sample size for the inspection. The sample size is the number of products that the inspector will check. In this case, since our code letter is K, we'll inspect 125 units. So after the inspector arrives at the factory, they're gonna pull 125 random items for the inspection. Now for the final step, we need to identify our acceptance and rejection numbers. Now, Andy, what are they? and where do we find them on the chart? Our acceptance and rejection numbers tell us how many defects are acceptable or allowable before the inspection fails. You'll find these numbers at the spot where the AQL percentages intersect with your code letter. So now we can see that if an inspector finds 11 or more minor defects, the inspection has failed. And if they find eight or more major defects, the inspection has failed. 
And of course, since critical defects are set at zero, then if the inspector finds even one critical defect, then that's cause to fail the inspection too. Okay, to recap. To recap, by following steps one through seven, we've learned that the inspector will check 125 random units out of the 2000 in our hypothetical order. 10 minor defects are acceptable, 11 or more are unacceptable. Seven major defects are acceptable, and eight or more are unacceptable. Zero crit critical defects are acceptable, and one or more were unacceptable. Okay, great. So hopefully this was helpful to everyone watching the video. And if you'd like to learn more about AQL, get a deeper dive, we recommend that you download our free guide, which is called AQL Inspections 101. And you can find the link to that in the description. Now, feel free as well to reach out to us if you have any questions. So thank you everyone so much for your time and have a great rest of your day or evening. Thank you, Billy, for helping me explain AQL inspections. And as Billy mentioned, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. Take care.